it seems to me that a lot of what we see here this year is about connections, connections between ideas, connections between people. Scott Alexander talks about bottle service parties for 350 bucks in New York and then providing water in Africa and making real connections with those people. Katie uh, talks about how uh, being an astronaut is not just about training and, and intelligence and technology and physicality, but it's about connections, about learning to live with four or five other people in a small space for a long time. One of the ways that we humans connect with other people is with the use of empathy. Edith Stein, a philosopher, said that empathy is the real experience of a foreign consciousness. It's how human beings uh, connect with another's life. And uh, I wrote an essay a couple of years ago, ago in, a, in a magic journal called Empathy, a Job Skill. To use empathy, we must have theory of mind. I started in magic when I was seven. By the time I was eight or nine, I was spending a lot of time every day practicing with a set of three mirrors on a table. And uh, those mirrors represented that outside consciousness, that theory of mind, that mind, those eyes that I was trying to learn to deceive. And it occurred to me after I wrote that piece that actually empathy is not just a job skill for magicians, it's really a job skill for anyone who has an audience or an end user in mind for the product of their work. And as it turns out, I've spent a lot of time in the last year or so talking to groups of designers, software interface designers, user experience people about this notion of empathy. But I'm gonna cut to the chase and do a piece of magic that's about empathy and that gives you a chance to exercise your empathic abilities. And actually, interestingly enough, I think the better you are at that, the more you might enjoy it. Can I get you to come up and help me for a few more minutes? Yeah. Come right this way. And we've met, but you didn't know you were going to do this, no. right? <laughs> so, welcome Kelly. Uh, just a little further this way. Great. Yeah. Good. Right here. Good. Okay. So uh, here's what we're going to do, Kelly. Together, we're going to create a demonstration of a unique and unusual kind of magic that I can create by depriving you of one of your senses. Now, don't worry. There will be no permanent damage. And it will not be your sense of humor. We desperately need that. It will actually be your sense of sight. I want you to face me a little more, please. Thanks. It will actually be your sense of sight. I don't want to have to blindfold you because there are times I'm going to ask you to open your eyes and see what's actually going on. So we'll just have to do it on faith, on trust. I'll ask you to close your eyes. Try and remember, despite everything that else is going on when I do, to keep them closed until I specifically count down and ask you to open them. If you accidentally open them earlier, it'll, just, it'll really kind of spoil the experience for you. Fair enough? Okay. So we'll start with a little preliminary test. Close your eyes. Dark in there, isn't it? Uh, if you think about it, it, I've heard it makes this, uh, some of this magic stuff a hell of a lot easier. I didn't think this was going to be, I didn't think there was going to be an organ in the way of this. Okay. Um, and uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, open your eyes. Has anything changed? Yes. Good, good, that's good. Because if you said no, it means I'm doing magic for the visually impaired. No one's impressed. You notice the hangar, right? I grew up in Brooklyn. We used to call this a car, a car antenna. Uh, <laughs> but here's the idea. I'd like you to extend your arms towards me right now, just like this, exactly perfectly. You can feel my hands up on your arms like this, right? Okay, and now I'm gonna, there's no longer a test. I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. Keep them closed until I specifically ask you to open them, okay? I'm gonna bring my hands down your arms like this. And as a matter of fact, to make it more secure, just return up and grasp my wrist from below, both my wrists from below. Hold tight, don't let go. A little blood must flow. <laughs> but no, don't let go, okay? Keep your eyes closed. Um, hang on, really, hold it a little tighter, but do give me a little flexibility to just reach back, get the hanger from off of my head. I'm gonna tap you with it, you can feel that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna tap you one more, I'm gonna tap you three more times. I'm gonna count to three. On the count of three, then and only then, I'll ask you to open your eyes as you see the solid hanger pass through your arm. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Did you all see it pass through her arm? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So check it out. Take out uh, check out the hanger while you have it. It's solid. There's no breaks, no gaps, no holes. It doesn't come apart or anything, right? Okay. Now, the first time you had control over my hands, you knew where my hands were. Um, the second time, I'm going to give you control over the hanger, okay? So reach out with your right hand, grasp the shaft right there in the middle. 
Right? That's good. Okay. Close your eyes again. Keep them closed until I specifically ask you to open them. Make sure you keep a good grasp on the hanger and grasp your left hand over your right. Okay? Just like that. That's perfect. Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to release the hanger to me. Keep your eyes closed. Release them to me, but then immediately reclasp your hands together so that the circle of your arm remains unbroken. Fair enough? So just uh, let that towards me and grasp your hands together. Very good, very good. All right. And you can feel the hanger there, right? Okay. Now, in a moment, I will tap you uh, three times with the... Sorry, I dropped it. Clumsy me. Um, in a moment, I will tap you three more times with the hanger. And on the count of three, you can open your eyes. One, two, three. <laughs> Pretty spooky, huh? Did you all see it pass through her arm? Yeah? Okay, good. All right. Now, uh, so you can, give this, you can give this back to me. All right. You can give this back and let go. And uh, let's do this a little differently. Uh, turn a little bit frontwards. That's good. And uh, put your right hand on top of your head this time, right? Just like that. Didn't expect you were going to be doing this when you got up this morning. And um, okay. Now, uh, there's no way I could pass this right here into this little space here without like cutting off your head or chopping off your hand, right? And I said there'd be no permanent damage. But we're going to give it a try anyway. Close your eyes. Don't open them until I tell you. Now, sometimes people in your situation, Kelly, they come to, up to me after the show. They say, I don't know exactly how you did that, but I think you cheated somehow, you know. But honest to goodness, I only cheat a little. So in a moment, I'm going to tap you three times. On a count of three, you can open your eyes. One, two, three. Son of a gun. <laughs> keep your hand up there. Keep your hand up there. Okay? <laughs> now, just to make sure, okay, we did not work out anything in advance, not in collusion. Truth is, you really don't know how this works, right? It's kind of, you know, over your head. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm ashamed. There'll be an apology in the Times in the morning. Okay. So, um, so here's the thing. One last time. Face front, face front, okay? Keep your hand up there. Extend your left hand straight out to the left and close your eyes. Okay, last time, last time. Uh, as a matter of fact, I should have said, keep your left hand on your hip, if you'd be so kind. That's very good. And now I'm going to tap you. Keep your eyes closed. I'm going to tap you three times. On the third and final tap, you can open your eyes. One, two, two and a half, and three. And that's empathy. <laughs> Thank you, Don. Thank you so much. That was great. Thank you so much. Hey, it's Kelly. So uh, now the thing is, now the thing is, the one thing I just want to point out to you now is that with knowledge, there is a price and a burden. The, the burden is this, right? It's up to you now whether you're going to help to preserve Kelly's sense of mystery for the rest of the evening, right? And while you're making a decision about that, think of the price. I hope you all had a good time seeing how that magic worked. But I think that Kelly had the best experience of all. She had a truly true experience of mystery, right? And here's the price. That's an experience none of you will ever be able to have. And I'm sorry, but I empathize. <laughs>